hi and welcome to Rob's Video Demos and today I'm going to look at Abrasoft Phantomorph. It's a morphing program. It's even got a friendly little wizard. Open or create a new project. Click next. Got a choice. Morph. Create morph movies between any two images. That's handy. Warp. I like a lot of these programs and there are quite a few including at least one open source one uh, where you can have fun warping images uh, sequence morph which is what I'm going to show you in a second where you grab a whole bunch of images and morph them at once or do a layer morph which is a bit trickier I won't show it to you but you can have fun later if you want, want to pursue it basically you use morphing in different layers Cool, press next. Source image sequence plus. And I've already set up some images and I'll just select them. Decided to go with faces, but it could be anything. A whole bunch of faces. Click next. It loads. The more faces or the more images that you include, the longer it takes. And once you get up around the thousand or so, Depending upon the resources on your machine, you may find that the whole thing stops working. So I would suggest limit the number of images. So here we go and set the size. I'm happy with 1280 by 720. That's high definition. And we've got 660 frames. I've found once you get up around the 4000 frame mark, everything becomes a little bit tedious. But it will depend on your machine and its grunt its resources and its CPU blah 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 press next and you've got a choice you can click on effect filter or caption uh, I don't really want to add captions but there you go you could uh, you can adjust brightness contrast color balance and so on you can use different filters take a quick look at the filters I mentioned brightness contrast red green blue hue saturation you can see the effect basically desaturation etc and you can chain your filters you've got negative gray smooth blur gaussian blur zoom blur radial blur um, a lot of different options emboss and the and mosaic oil paint splash cylinder quirl what does well look like? It looks like that. Pinch. You have a lot of fun. That's not too bad, actually. Yeah, why not? Let's keep that one. But let's go back to effect. That was filter. You can do a background colour. And choose it from the colour picker. But maybe we won't bother with that. We'll take that out. You can also choose a background image. And... They provide you with quite a few, and I've made a few more, and uh, yeah, it's quite useful. Let's choose that one, just so that we've got something. And then you choose a mask. Masks basically work by hiding parts of your image. So if we chose, say, that one, and I've created some custom masks. Actually, I might use one of my custom masks. And then you just play with a slider totally disappears or totally comes back or totally in between and adjust it where you like it you can also do uh, a foreground uh, which will be a frame or something or whatever these are frames I've made a few of my own and yeah I mean I think you get the idea we won't do it we'll do light instead Again, I've made a few custom lights, but it comes with some standards. Let's pick a standard one. So you can just see the effect. Increase the brightness, or the intensity of the brightness. And incre increase or decrease the darkness. And let's just go for something like that. And you can add sound effects. It's got dog laugh, 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 and ring. I'm sure we can find some more WAV files. I haven't bothered. Uh, it just shows you what you can do. And then you click OK. 
and now we have got to click next and we've got face locator let's use face locator you don't have to if you don't use face locator you can just put your dots in yourself and move them around morph it as you please you can do a straightforward morph or you can do something um, crazy and wacky and way out and experimental you can apply one this is face locator it's done a good job but I'll just apply all and correct them later it's just to show how to correct it does a pretty good job of identifying faces so um, I recommend the face locator particularly if you're actually morphing faces if you're not morphing faces then don't bother although as an experiment it's interesting to see what it chooses as an alternative to a face it can be a bit sluggish and this is one of the things when you've loaded a lot of images say over a thousand oh, with my machine anyway um, it bogs down a bit but if you wait it works click on play and not much happening so let's instead uh, just grab these dots and make it do something by shrinking it down a bit okay and now you can see there's some action we might actually move it so there's a little bit of action happening which is all that I want next frame a bit more happening next frame you can move the dots individually there are three well you can add dots remove dots and move dots you can zoom in and out there are lots more controls I won't bother showing you everything you get the idea it's moving it's morphing it's not dramatic because there's not a lot happening these are pretty similar images but there's a subtle movement happening and we'll just go and we'll see if we can find any problem areas here's a more significant morph happening because there's a different face and the face locator has found pretty much everything in pretty much exactly the right spot just correct this one a bit by stretching it so I'm simply drawing a box around all of the select selected dots and here I'll leave it alone it's not exactly right but it's close enough it's up to you whether you want that absolute precision or not uh, you can individually move different features or you can move the whole face you can also if you selected say that face and those dots you can scale which is basically make it larger or smaller you can rotate the whole thing or you can skew it try again just bring it into alignment need to scale it a little bit and move it and it pretty well matches now and so on that one's got the same problem just the face locator did not locate the face it located one eye it happens if you actually don't use drawings and these are studio artist uh, creations but if you use photographs or really uh, slightly less messy drawings then you'll get a better result at least in terms of face locating and we'll just rotate that and 
move it. I think that's close enough. Close enough. Close enough. It's basically just an error checking and adjustment procedure. And when you think you've got it the way you want it, you can save the project, but you can also just skip to export movie. Now, this is where it gets to be a bit more fun. You can choose uh, a, a range. You've got image sequence. You get a sequence of images, pretty obvious. AVI movie, animated GIF, could be handy for a website or whatever. Flash movie, ditto. Um, web page, definitely web oriented. Or a screensaver for your PC, PC or someone else's. A standalone exe, so you can export it, send it to someone, and they can just run it. And I'll just leave it as QuickTime Movie. Now you can export reverse frames. I won't bother this time around, but it just means it goes, it morphs in one direction and then morphs back the other way, which is often useful with a GIF uh, animation. Compressor quality, adjustable, hardware acceleration on this machine that's acceptable, um, and so on. They're basically um, what you need to select. And then you give it a name. I'll just call it test morph dot mov and save and in due course it will start generating depending upon your hardware and its resources, its CPU, how much grunt it has and uh, generally it's pretty quick and you can do lots of things with this not just morph, you can just forget about the morphing if you like and use it as a, a slideshow generator uh, it'll do that as well don't, just don't morph at all and it'll um, just quietly tween between slides and you can still use all of the effects that I showed you and the filters so it's quite a powerful little tool um, almost like a video editor in some respects and uh, quite useful but as I say limited by the performance of your machine and your patience but you can do some really cool morphing and plug it into your video editor, your real video editor and edit up quite a nice effect laden package so here it is, it's chugging along to 19, almost 20 percent I'll probably tag the resulting file onto the end of this video but you see what it can do, that's Abrasoft Phantomorph there are alternatives, search Google, search Bing, whatever is your preference, go and have a look, play around with morphing, it's quite fun. That's it from me, Rob out.